Right, I've got Mark ZX2 here this weekend. It's the coronation day, and uh, whilst the king's having his metal hat put on, this little power supply is going to have its metal hat taken off. Uh, bought this in a batch of stuff. You haven't seen the video yet because it's nowhere near finished of me. I don't know if I ever will, repairing the Fidelity 2001, which was in the same batch of stuff I bought off eBay six months ago, which has been applied to the mains. And so there's a lot of broken parts in it, to say the least. So this AF power supply, which is one of the banned Taiwanese types from 1980, um, is another item in this um, thing. Now, if you turn it round, Mark, the first thing we notice is the terminals are missing. So we've got an added expense to do that so would you like to just take the lid off that and we'll see whether it's the power supply that passes mains through to fidelity 2001s no doubt from a vendor who knows nothing about cb radio whatsoever but probably has a hundred sets for sale these make such the, the safety thing the, the reason they were banned was totally on electrical safety and nothing to do with the performance Ooh, ooh. Oh, oh! That's had a bodge, hasn't it? Yes. So we've got a piece of um, polystyrene. polystyrene in there. Why would you do that? Because there's a dry joint. It needs propping up. Yeah. Okay, so we've taken the polystyrene now. Nice and clean. Yes, as I've seen worse. I've seen uh, a mouse or something in there. Yeah. Well, as long as it's gone now. Yeah. Have you put the vacuum cleaner away? No. Uh, oh, it's still there then, isn't it? Let's see, yeah. Good, I'll put a fresh battery on that. Yeah. Right, okay, so we're probably going to strip this down and uh, and start. So the, what we've got to do, as we did with the one six weeks ago, we've got to make sure that the switch is switching live and not neutral. Yeah. It's got to make sure it's got shrouding on the pins. We've got to change the fuse holder for a safe one because this type of fuse holder, you pop it out and the fuse, and the fuse can stay in. And if it's wired to the live is on there, you can end up being able to get a shock from that as well. So we we'll change the fuse holder, we change the wiring, and we'll change the capacitors. And 40 minutes later, we'll have a lovely power supply. So we'll come back to this whilst we progress with the work. Okay, we start the video. We've changed the capacitors. The 2200 there. Uh, Mark's about to get the little hot air gun, hopefully. Yeah, I'll re we've rewired the switch. Just putting some heat shrink tubing on, which is why it, the fuse holder needs it, the transformer terminals need it on the primary, and the switch need it. So we've wired it such that we're switching live and not neutral. The fuse holder's in the live, so the mains goes in straight to the fuse holder and then it goes to the switch and then it goes to the, of course the transformer neutral goes straight from the main silicon single pole switch uh, to the transformer we've retained their white wire if i don't knock the camcorder over and that's a matter of that goes in there we've put new terminals on the back which will be revealed shortly and mark's lost something a little phillips screwdriver oh, that actually, one here yeah. that's the one so our plan is to do these rebuilds in 45 minutes for them to be cost effective from start to finish. Well, we weren't going to kind of show it at this point. We've screwed it all back together. We're just about to do a, a test and look what happens when uh, we open the, the plug top up. Look at this. So for a start, we've got a 13 amp fuse instead of a three amp fuse. And the wire is all coming out. And look, they've got blue to the live and they've got brown to the neutral and completely yeah. wrong as well so we're the going to rewire should the always be longer than those should so we're going to redress that and i'll put the camera back on when we've done that that's shot right so as you can now see we've got blue to the left we've got live to the right a three amp fuse in he's got it so the shortest lead is the uh, brown one for live so if it really does get yanked that's going to come out first then the neutral and then finally the earth because it should be done Mark was in assembling leads and things for years. Right, we'll come back to the video when we've done some initial tests. We don't want to show the smoke on the video. 
Okay, so here we are with Mark's head in the way. Sorry. And uh, the switchy's done. We've just done some initial tests. And we've got the... Can you put those in the yeah, back? I'll just show the video. Yeah. What have I pressed? Hold. There we go. There we go. 13.9. We've got the red light. And those LEDs can fail on these. Yeah. A bit like the Canon uh, Maxcon 4 ETX lights. So, take that out and put the bulb in. We've got a 21 watt car bulb here. So that's nearly 2 amps. Let's just switch that on. Yeah, see if it'll support that. And then we'll go with the test gear and on, that's fine. Right, switch off. Uh, I just want to test these on camera. So, let's make sure the camera is can see the ESR meter. I'll just test these capacitors. Should that be? Uh, 2200. 2700, it's a little high, and that can be indicating that failure is imminent. They can go up, they can go down. And now test one of the 100s. 116, that's fair enough. But these are 40 years old, we take them out. There was a little bit of corrosion on one of the pins of the 2200. Here's the other 100. And that works fine as well but we've changed them all we've put them higher grade ones in anyway so that's that bit we're going to get some test gear um, and we'll see whether it will actually do three amps which they usually do but not five okay so now we're on to the test equipment and ooh, kneels on the floor switches on power supply 13.85 volts so let's put one amp on it um, when I can remember which button to press. Now I want it to across. Tell you what, we'll put that to zero and move it to one amp. That's the one. Enter. So 13, it's doing 13.58 volts with a one amp load. And for a lot of CB radios of the older type, that will be transmit at four watts. Um, very few legal UK CBs are above 1.2 amps. So we'll now take it up to 2 amps, so we're going beyond. So it's now 13.3, so it's supporting that absolutely fine. We'll take it to 3 amps. 12.2 volts, that's what it's rated for. So I'm going to just press off. Feel that transistor. Yeah, that's uh, getting warm, but that's absolutely fine. Will it do 4 amps? <laughs> for, for a second 9.4 so no this 3 amps and it will do 3 amps so there we go it definitely does what it's supposed to do but anything about this 3 to 5 malarkey yeah it's, uh, take that with a pinch of salt switch it off please and we'll just come back with the pad tester we'll just get this in shot so Mark's just holding the earth onto the hopefully the bit which hasn't got varnish on uh, we'll switch this machine on and we need to select a test and it is a class 1 test because it's an earth product. Switch on. Earth's failed. Now that might be because you uh, haven't held it. No, you, we, we, okay, we'll, we'll start again. So, what I'll, I still want to go back to holding on the transformer yeah, on, because okay. it's all right holding it on the wire, but it doesn't prove it's, it's on the case. What you are there is just on. Because this puts 10 amps through, you see. There we go. Just try that. You, you know, yeah. Make sure you're pressing on that. Yeah. I don't know whether we can restart like that. There we go, that's fine. That's it. that's it. So, there we are. So, just it was just a matter of, um, you can see what I'm trying to do, not just prove the wires there, but the actual thing is, is earthed. 
So there we are, we've uh, done the power supply, just needs its lid putting on okay. and that's another um, job done, we'll clean the mains lead up and, and Bob's your uncle. So thanks for watching, another power supply, this time it's a 230 volt one for the UK and not a 220 volt version for Europe like the last one was.